The smallest objects visible to a keen human eye are a minuscule 0.1 millimetres in size. That's around the width of a single hair. Most bacterial cells barely measure a micrometre or two, meaning you'd need a powerful microscope to see them. A hundred bacteria could easily line up across the diameter of just one hair. Atoms are a whole other story. They're so small you'd need very special equipment to see one. Even very large molecules such as a double helix strand of DNA barely reach a couple of nanometers in width. And this means that several meters of genetic material can be crammed into a single tiny cell. The atom with the largest radius you'll find in nature is cesium, measuring about 300 picometers. The smallest atom hydrogen is closer to just 50 picometers. This scale is so small, hundreds of millions of atoms could fit inside a one millimeter gap on your ruler. These invisible units from fractions of a millimeter down to picometers are difficult to imagine. To see objects that are a fraction of a millimetre, you might use the kind of light microscope you find in most labs. For detailed images of things just a few micrometres in size, you might need a powerful electron microscope. To detect anything on the scale of nanometres, scientists often use devices so sensitive they can feel the tiny bumps of their atoms. We use the word nanoparticle to describe tiny bits of material measuring anywhere between one and a hundred nanometers in diameter. On this scale, particles don't behave like the individual atoms they're made from. Nor do they look or act like larger chunks of material. For one thing, a nanoparticle's size often changes how a material interacts with waves of light, allowing them to scatter and reflect colors in unexpected ways. Nanoparticles are also more uniform in size and shape, allowing chemical engineers to pack them together neatly when building metal or ceramic structures. They also make for a far smoother coating than larger sized particles. Imagine coating a house with rocks compared with sand. From a distance, which one would look smoother? But to understand some of the most powerful properties of nanoparticles, we need to understand something called the square cube law. The space taken up by an object is known as its volume. Its surface area, on the other hand, is defined by the object's skin, the layer that's exposed to the outside world. Imagine dividing a cube into eight equal-sized chunks. Each of the box's six sides would in turn be divided into four equal-sized quarters, adding up to a total of 24 faces over the outside of the cube. Pulling the cube apart into eight sections, each smaller block would now represent one-eighth of the object's original volume. On each of the eight blocks, there are three surfaces that were previously exposed to the outside. But each of the smaller blocks now has another three faces that were locked up inside the cube and are now exposed. Let's look closely at those numbers. Each of those eight blocks is just one-eighth of the original volume. The total volume of the block hasn't changed. But after pulling it apart, its surface area has now doubled. Putting it another way, one of the eight smaller blocks makes up one-eighth of the big block's volume. But one of the eight smaller blocks is not one-eighth of the old block's surface area. This is the square cube law. Changes in an object's size means its volume needs to be cubed, but its surface area only needs to be squared. We're not just talking cubes either. Any 3D shape follows this important law. Whatever the object's shape, smaller versions have more of their surface exposed to the environment than larger versions. Consider this. One kilogram of micrometer-sized particles has the same surface area as one gram of nanoparticles made up of the same material. 
Each micrometer-sized particle is 1,000 times bigger than each nanoparticle. Obeying the square cube law, they have 1 billion times the volume, but only 1 million times the surface area. To use a large-scale example from nature, it explains why whales are so big. With their big volumes and relatively low surface areas, there's less skin exposed to the cold waters of the polar oceans, trapping body heat around their organs. But it's the tiny scale we're interested in. Tiny volumes and large surface areas expose more particles to light, temperature or other chemicals. In sunscreens, for example, nanoparticles made of various materials absorb or reflect harmful UV light. Chemicals can combine together in reactions far more easily when their atoms and molecules can come into contact. Think of it like a crowd of people shaking hands. In a large crowd, those in the middle would need to wait some time for their turn. But nanoparticles act like smaller crowds, with fewer people waiting to shake hands inside. Not only does this help speed up reaction rates, it can help chemists control their reactions with far greater precision.